bone has to be hard. It's got to be hard to protect the things underneath it. In this case, the brain, and in your rib cage or under your rib cage, your heart and your lungs, which are very uh, delicate and uh, necessary organs. Well, that's all right. Hard bone protects what's underneath it. But also, we go lifting things with our arms and running on our legs. And so these long bones have to be not only hard to bear our weight, but tough so they don't fracture. You can imagine, your bones could be stony or glassy. They'd be just as hard, but they'd break easily. They'd be brittle. That wouldn't do us any good at all. So bone has to have those two qualities. It has to be both hard and tough and slightly flexible. Well, bones vary depending on the animals you find them in. This is uh, a bone from a pelican, which is a very large bird which can also fly. And of course, if you're going to fly, you don't want lots of heavy bones. So the pelican bones are extremely thin-walled. Very, very thin there. Mostly air in a pelican's bone, and it gets extra strength because of this cross-strutting, sort of bony engineering that's found inside it. Well, a kangaroo doesn't have to worry so much about weight. It has to have very powerful legs, and the walls of its bones are extremely thick. There's a leg bone from a kangaroo. You can see how thick that wall is. But by and large, bones will sacrifice where they can weight for extra engineering principles of strength. And that's a bone from a cow, a fairly average bone, showing how much of that cross-strutting is found in the part where it's really needed, up around about the joint. But whatever the animal, the bony material itself has to be both tough and strong. And in that sense, it's rather like nature's own fiberglass. If you take something like a fiberglass boat, you'll find it's tough and it's hard. And when you analyze it, that comes from, or those qualities come from two components. The fibrous part is literally glass fiber. And it's put into position and it's welded together with a plastic, which is poured on as a liquid, and when it cures, hardens to a tough, dense plastic. And there are those two components you need the strength and flexibility from the fibre, and the hardness from the plastic. Back to the bone. Well, I can't dissect those bones and show you the fibres and the hard bits. We call them the minerals or the salts, and it would take a microscope to do it, even if I could. What I can do is to show you what happens to the bone if we take out the fibres and then take out the salty bits, or the minerals. First of all, the fibres. Here's an ordinary bone straight from the animal. It's a ribbish sort of thing, and if I bend it, it takes a lot of strength you see it is actually bending there. It's hard if I tap it on the desk. And when I do finally break it, it doesn't break terribly cleanly. It bends and then sort of snaps a bit like a twig. That's all the fibrous element inside it. Well, take that bone, bang it in the fire, and what you do is to remove all the, the uh, fibrous bits. It comes out of the fire like that. Still, it's just as hard, but it's extremely brittle. I can snap it easily in my fingers. And if I put all those bits together and press them together, it just crumbles into dust. Your bones, if they were like that, would be as hard as they are now, but you wouldn't last till dinner time. You'd be a jelly heap on the floor. So you don't want bones that are just hard. Well, you don't want bones that are just fibrous either, because if you take an ordinary bone like the one I showed you and shove it into mild acid, this is strong enough to affect the bone over a couple of days, but not strong enough to hurt my fingers in the short term. I remove all the salts the hard bits from the bone, and it becomes just like rubber. There you have it, a rubber bone. It's so rubbery that if I want to, I can pick it up and tie it in a knot. That's one of the few knotted bones you'll see. It's a bone with the fibrous bits left, but all the hard, salty minerals removed. So there you are, the two necessary qualities of bone, hardness and some toughness or flexibility. We take bones for granted. They're either the things that the dog chews or that are left behind when an animal dies. But inside each bone is a wealth of natural engineering.